Another art form that you're likely to encounter nearby a collection of ancient Chinese jades is the piece mold bronze vessel. As with many of the jades, these are also grave objects. Vessels of this sort come from the Shang dynasty, around 1700 to 1050 BC, and also from the succeeding Western and Eastern Zhou dynasties. They're really remarkable for a number of reasons. One is that the technological skill involved in crafting vessels of bronze on this scale and with such intricacy is completely without equal at this time. In fact, we don't see anything of this quality elsewhere in the world until the much later archaic Greek period. Across the large region of China, united under the Shang kings, we notice a strongly controlled decorative schema to the bronze vessels. This suggests a very centralized, top-down ruling authority with little room for artistic innovation and stylistic variation. These vessels were all crafted under the strict guidelines from the nobility above. And that's where you'd originally find them, too. They ain't going to be found in your common bloke's grave. And the most prominent decorative motif encountered on nearly all bronze vessels and other contemporary arts is that of a sort of monster face or mask called a tautia. You can make out the Tautia quite easily on this one particular large tripod vessel called a Jia, used for holding and warming ceremonial wine at the Shang royal funerary rites. See the two large round knobs, or bosses? Those are its eyes, and in between you see the long raised nose ridge, and then above the eyes are some elaborate curled horns, and the smaller curls below the eyes are its fangs. You can follow the evolution of the Tautia monster figure as it gradually morphs into later, more familiar and recognizable forms like dragons and ogres. But the thing I really want to point out on this vessel is further up the body. You see that neat, triangular motif running around the rim? And these are actually stylized cicadas. They're facing downward, so the tips at the top are their butts and the eyes are at the bottom. And here's another Shang Dynasty bronze vessel called a Fang Lei, also used for wine. As common decorative motifs at this time, the Tautia and Cicadas emblazon this vessel too. Well, here, what if we just zoom in a bit to the lid and then flip it upside down? There. The Tautia. And then, further on down the body, at the tips of each one of these triangular wedges, we see a little Cicada. Yeah, a little hard to see. If you can't see it, you'll just have to believe me. A little more gratifying, though, is this impression of a cicada that's cast inside the vessel's lid. So with the Tautia and cicadas, we see an interesting use of both the imaginary and natural bestiary decorating these ancient bronze funerary vessels. Much later on, the archaic bronze vessel shape and decorative patterns were emulated as a sort of archaism, a taste for antiquity, in the new precious material of high artistic and aristocratic achievement, porcelain. This blue and white square vase comes from the late Ming Dynasty, the Wanli period, 1573 to 1620. Late 14th century Ming Dynasty. Oh, it breaks the heart. And the head. You hit the head. I'll never forgive myself. Thank you, Dr. Jones. The shape is meant to mimic the bronze vessels from a couple thousand years earlier, like the Fang Lei we were just looking at. And notice the similar four-cornered shape bulging at the center, tapering at the shoulders and base, and a squat, square, box-like neck. And this vase was probably in the ownership of a well-educated scholar bureaucrat, something to show off his lofty classical education. The antiquarian taste seen in its archaic shape goes well with the high flute and symbolism of the decorations. You see the regal dragon with its five-fingered claw, an ancient and generally auspicious symbol. The little jade chimes, cranes and phoenixes skirting about wispy clouds, and flutes with cute little ribbons, which, when played, draw down the phoenixes from the clouds. And above all that, running along the neck of the vessel, you see a somewhat familiar band of triangular shapes. And this is yet another archaism on this Ming Dynasty vase, a band of highly stylized cicadas, just like on the Shang tripod jia we looked at earlier. So just as the cicada is a symbol of resurrection and continuity, we see a great interest among Chinese art forms in the resurrection and preservation of ancient shapes and motifs. 
And if that's not all you ever wanted to know about cicadas, I urge you to hop on over to ScarabSolutions.com to check out some good photos and video clips that I wasn't able to squeeze into the podcast, plus links to various cool cicada resources, including a breathtaking award-winning video, Return of the 17-Year Cicadas, from Indiana University and some cicada recipes. But now that the Bird 13 Magic Cicadas are all gone, you'll just have to hold out for the Dog Day Cicadas to have your Choco Fudgy Twirl Cicada Sickle. And lastly, I'd like to thank Catherine Savage of Lake County Forest Preserves in Libertyville, Illinois, and Dr. Jean Kritzke, editor of American Entomologist and professor of biology at the College of Mount St. Joseph in Cincinnati, for their help in answering some of my stickier questions about cicadas. Thanks for listening, so long, and see you next time on the Scarab Solutions Ancient Art Podcast.